okay light and shadow this is our 14th chapter of science so students do you know what are the sources of light anything which emits the light uh, is called as a source of light now there are very uh, different types of source of light the source of light can be man made or it can be artificial light also so artificial light we have the example such as torch candle electric bulb all these are artificial bulb because they are made by they are man made so they are called as artificial source of light but the sun is the natural source of light so it is only one example which we can consider as a natural source of light other all examples we have to consider that they are the artificial source of light students also you are going to study two more important words in this lesson that is luminous object and non luminous object so what does this word luminous means luminous object means the object which is having their own light okay so the object which has its own light are called as luminous object for example we can say that sun is having its own light so sun is an example of luminous object and what does the non luminous object means the moon trees rivers people do they have their own light no we don't have the own light even moon you can say moon is not visible in the sky when there is lot of sunlight in the day time so moonlight is only seen in the night time because when there is no sun that time we can see the moonlight okay so moon also borrows the light from the sun so sun is the main source of night we can say the sun is the main source of light and the moon trees rivers peoples these are the example of non luminous why non luminous because non luminous means that the object which does not have their own light okay now we will see the actual definition for luminous and non luminous object the object or the material which emits light emits light means which has their own light that uh, means that produces the light from their own from themselves only those are the sources of light and these are called as luminous object of light okay what is the example of luminous objects of light sun why sun because sun is uh, having its own source of light the light which is generated from within the sun that is the example of the luminous objects of the material then what is the meaning of non luminous object the object or the material that are not having their own light themselves they cannot emit light by themselves are called as non luminous object we have seen the example such as candle uh, uh, candle bulb these are the examples of non luminous uh, 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 non, non luminous light okay uh, even stars are uh, example of luminous light because star is also having their own light but in non luminous object we have the example such as planets satellites okay so these are the example of the non luminous lights okay we also have some non luminous objects such as um, candle uh, torch these are also non luminous object they don't have their own source of light they work on any other substances then we have studied about artificial source of light and natural source of light we have seen the examples such as candle torch these are the examples of artificial source of light these are man made source of light so they are called as artificial source of light and the thing which is produced with the help of natural source that is called as natural source of light and what is the example students the example is the sun now we are going to see that how does the light travels so we will first see we uh, take an example students in this experiment you are supposed to take three cardboards 
Okay, what you are going to take, you are going to take three cardboards and you are going to make a hole simultaneously in all the three uh, cardboards in the same place. Okay, and you are going to place the cardboards one behind the another. And uh, uh, behind the third cardboard, what you are going to place, you are going to place a candle. What you are going to place, you are going to place a candle. Okay. So you are going to place a candle. Here you can see the candle. Okay. And what you are going to see from the small hole, you are going to see the image which you can see here. The candle which is light properly, that light you can see in the image. So that is the view from the cardboard that you are going to see afterwards. So this is the thing that you are going to see when all the cardboards are in a straight line and you can see the image of the candle and you can see the view also of the candle. So what this experiment proves is, this experiment proves that the light travels in a straight line. Why? Because all the cardboards are placed one behind the another so that from one hole you can see from the second hole and from the third hole you can see the candle which is lighted. Okay, so students, this is the example or experiment we can say in which that proves that the light travels in a straight line. When the light travels in a straight line, this is also called as a linear propagation of light. Now students, just observe what will happen if the cardboards are not placed one behind the other. What will happen? Okay, the object you will not be able to see in the view. You will not be able to see the object in the view. Why you are not able to see the object? Because the cardboards are not placed one behind the other or not placed in a straight line. So this is the reason that you are not able to see any image uh, of candle when uh, the cardboards are not in a line. So this proves us that the lights travel in a straight line and this is also called as a linear propagation of light okay one more example we are having that is uh, the light entering through the window in the early morning the sunlight comes in your house whatever sunlight reaches from your window to your house you can see the sunlight passing through you can see the rays of light entering through the silt of door or window with from a small hole. So from a small hole also you can see that the beam of light is entering through that small hole and the rays of the light from that silt uh, are uh, coming towards the inside the house or the floor. And even in that beam of light you can see some dust particles floating uh, or floating in the beam of that light. So due to these particles, what happens? The path of the light becomes visible. So whatever dust particles you can see from that, you can see that the path of the light becomes visible. And as we all know that what is the path of the light? It travels in a straight line. So whatever light that comes from the window or the hole from the uh, a small hole in the roof or the window the light travels through that hole uh, and it uh, comes uh, falls on the floor and you can see some dust particles also floating in the air in that sunlight so this shows that the light travels in a straight light travels in a straight line okay so this example proves you that then reflection of light what is what do you how do we see objects do you know students so we see the object due to the source of light okay how does the object are seen by us so we will see this so what happens the rays of the light fall on object when you on the light what happened all the rays of the light fall on on an object and from that object what happens it reflects the light from the object again that light is reflected and this is called as reflection of light and when these objects 
when they reflect the rays they reaches our eyes and we can see the object very clearly okay so students here is the source of light that is bulb okay here is the source of light here is the source of light and in this source of light what do you uh, happens from the source of light the light falls on the object so now the light falls on the object so what happens on the object the object reflects the light towards the object uh, towards the another object and this is called as reflection of light what does it call it is called as reflection of light and we see this object when the reflected rays reach our eyes so how, how do we see the object when the objects are uh, fall uh, when the reflected rays fall on our eyes that time we are able to see the objects that time we are uh, we are able to see the objects okay so this is about reflection of light once again i will explain you students reflection of light what does the reflection of light means reflection of light means when the light falls on an object the object also reflects the light or throws back the uh, light on the surface of that object means the ref uh, when an uh, light uh, falls on the object what happens the object immediately throws it back or it is is return returns back to the object surface of the object this is called as reflection of light and how we are able to see the object when the obje, uh, light falls on the object these reflected rays from the object reaches to our eyes and this is how we are able to see the object okay so now students also Uh, i would like to give an example of a plane mirror when you stand in front of a plane mirror what happens when you raise your left hand what is the mirror shows mirror shows the right hand and when you raise your right hand what does the mirror show mirror shows the your left hand what happens exactly when the left or right hand um, is raised that is your original object but in mirror it is exchanged in mirror what happens the image is exchanged when you are showing your right hand the image uh, formed in the mirror shows exactly the opposite things this is how the image is formed in the mirror okay and uh, whenever an object is closer to the mirror what happens uh, it is farer to the mirror what happens in mirror what does it show the mirror show exactly the opposite thing it shows that the uh, object is closer to the mirror and does the size change in the image size of the image change in the mirror no the size does not changes when if the person is short it will show short only if the person is uh, heighted it will show uh, heighted only so it will not change the size the size will not change what will change the reflection uh, the image obtained by the mirror will be exactly opposite so opposite of left is right so when you are raising your left hand what will uh, what will the mirror show it will show the right hand and when the object is far uh, from the mirror what does the mirror will show exactly the opposite thing it will show that the object is in front of the mirror or closer to the mirror but the thing that does not change that is the size of the image that will not change in the mirror image so this is one of the uh, example that you have in your lesson okay then pinhole camera so students pinhole camera is a camera which is very easily uh, can be made at home so for this what things you will require you will require one empty cylinder box so what you have to supposed to do with that empty cylinder box you are supposed to remove its cap on one side and paste a thin white paper so what you are going to do you are going to remove one side of the cap of the cylinder box and you are going to place a thin white paper 
and what you are going to do you are going to make a small hole at the center of the cap what you are going to do you are going to make a small hole at the center of the cap then what you are going to do you are going to put a candle in front of the pinhole camera here you can see the candle so candle you can see uh, candle is lighted and there is a hole and from that hole what you can see you will see that the image formed by the pinhole camera will be inverted so why it is inverted because the light is passing through the pinhole camera the image formed by the pinhole camera is upside down or we can say inverted so you can see the flame of the image is exactly in opposite direction that is upside down here you can see the image formed by the pinhole camera is upside down and also the image is brighter formed in the pinhole camera means you can see the image is very much bright and it can be seen very nicely with colors also so uh, this is about the pinhole camera so what things you require for making a pinhole camera cylindrical box a thin white paper sheet to place it over it and you have to make a hole for seeing the objects okay so the image are in uh, image seen from the pinhole camera are inverted or upside down why this is because the light travels in a straight line so i am given you the answer previously only then the rays that travel from top to bottom of an object across the pinhole and continue to move in a straight line so whatever object is from traveling from the main object towards the pinhole camera from top to bottom is exactly opposite and it moves in a straight line and which forms the image in a inverted or upside down position and this image is also bright why it is bright because you are making a small hole in the pinhole camera the hole is very tiny and through that tiny hole the image obtained of the candle is bright and you can see the image very clearly uh, also we have a natural pinhole camera in our nature that is Uh, made by the trees so when we pass under the trees covered with large number of leaves what do we see there are small small patches of sunlight through which the sun sunlight tries to enter the ground so these circular or pinhole images of the sun uh, that comes from the gap between the leaves acts as a pinhole camera so what they, uh, when you are walking in a garden or in a um, area where all the trees are there uh, so what you can see you can see that the branches or the leaves are merged with each other and the leaves uh, form such uh, are uh, frame in such a way that the sunlight is not able to properly pass through the uh, through them so the whatever the tiny gap between the leaves are there from that the uh, sunlight tries to pass through it and this uh, the light which passes from the gaps between the leaves is acts as a pinhole camera okay the next thing is transparent translucent and opaque so students you are supposed to know what is transparent what is translucent and what is opaque so the material which through which the light passes is called as a transparent now for example students uh, you take a glass in that glass if you pour water you can see the color of water it is transparent color but if you pour a juice of orange color you can see the orange color juice means what does the glass indicates the glass in indicates the transparency that means you can see uh, from the glass very clearly so whatever light that passes through the glass uh, is known as transparent because you can see whatever things you pour in that glass those are visible because the glass is transparent 
okay if you take all this thing in a steel glass steel glass you will not be able to see what is pour in the um uh, in the glass so whenever guests are there in your house you take a juice in a glass uh um, glass why you take in a gla transparent glass because the juice will be able to see uh, and it will look attractive for that purposes we take it in a glass but in a steel glass what the person will think that he has given us water he has not uh, he has uh, the person is not serving properly for that purpose the things the object or the substance through which the light passes through uh, clear are visible clearly they are called as transparent for example glass and water even whatever uh, what if anything falls in the water you are able to identify that something is fallen in the water that is because the water has the transparency property okay what does the meaning of transparent which allows the material through which the light passes very easily is called as transparent substances what are the examples here glass and water then the second is the substances through which the light does not allow to pass through is called as opaque for example door so door is made up of wood can you see the person who is outside the house who is ringing the bell no you cannot see why because the door is opaque and it is not transparent so you are not able to see but there is a eye piece on the door hole through which it is made up of glass through which you can see the person who is standing outside the door you can see whether he is known person or he is a stranger from that pin hole you can see eye piece you can see whether Uh, the person is stranger or a known person and you can open the door in uh, that way so door is an example of opaque because from if you cannot see the person who is outside the door so door is a opaque why it is opaque because the light does not pass through the opaque substances so students i hope you understood the example of opaque substances <coughs> then the third is substances through which the light passes partially is called as translucent partially means which what we can say that light may be pass or may not be pass such substances are called as translucent substances so what are the examples of translucent substances paper we can take from uh, paper we can consider as an example of the uh, translucent substance because it partially you can see from the paper and partially you cannot so it is a mixture of transparent and opaque that is known as translucent the next part of the lesson is shadow the uh, students uh, in the starting of the lecture i asked you that you have you must have played with your shadow when you were small okay so what is shadow shadow is nothing but a dark space behind the opaque object now when you uh, you are which type of uh, person transparent opaque or translucent substance we are opaque because nothing can transparent through us so which type of material we are made up of we are made up of opaque substances through which uh, light cannot pass through uh, another side so the shadow is a dark space behind the opaque object so now we are opaque so if i put on the torch on a person standing in front of me so what uh, will happen the light will not pass through the person why it will not pass because the person is a opaque because person is a opaque from whom the light will not travel to the other side so what will happen so the light will show a shadow image behind the person so that darker space behind the person of an opaque object is called as a shadow Uh, remember students shadow only falls when the object is opaque if the object is not opaque it will not show the shadow okay it stops when the light from passes through it okay so when the object is opaque the opaque substance will not allow the light to pass through it and the shadow is 
formed how does the light travel students so light travels in a straight line and the line cannot bend around the opaque substance so as you all know light is passing in a straight line so can the line bend and go towards the other side no it cannot go so as we all know say that the light travels in a straight line so light will not bend to pass through the opaque object it will leave it as it is okay so students you must have seen some trees or a pencil shadow so the shadow uh, the opaque object comes in the way of the light source that time it forms a shadow now when there is a sunlight and that sunlight falls on a tree what happens the shadow of the tree is formed okay you can see the shadow of the uh, tree in the light okay so tree is an opaque object and when the light trace falls on the opaque object what happens it does not transparent so what happens the formation of shadow takes place in the opaque object and you can see the object very well even if you place a pencil in front of the torch you can see the shadow of that pencil also so what does it indicate that the light does not reach the wall or any other surface of the other side of the object what the things that you see in the shadow portion or in the darker region that is nothing but the shadow of that object okay light does not uh, reaches the wall so you, whenever a per, you on the torch on a person the shadow formation is there on the wall but that is that we cannot say that is a light we can say that is the shadow of an object that we can say shadow of an object students you must have played with your shadow when the light goes okay you must have made with your two hands different shapes such as uh, butterfly bird uh, snake dog snail or uh, deer such animal faces you would have made from your hands and you would have seen the images on the wall of your house so it is very fun with to play with your shadow so just the scientific reason that you should know about how the formation of shadow is there and how does the shadow uh, forms that you should know that is that is the thing that we are learning in this lesson okay the shadow of an object is formed when the light does not pass through the object light does not pass through the object means the object is opaque the object is Opaque. Then the second condition of formation of shadow is that it forms depends upon the relative distance of the source of light. Means, uh, if the person from far uh, is owning the torch on the object, so the image form of that object or shadow form of that object on the wall will be smaller. But when you come closer to that object, the bigger shadow you can see on the wall so it depends upon the relative distance between the source of light and the object so if you take the source of light away from the object the formation of the shadow will be dull or you will see smaller shadow and when you take the uh, source of light towards the object that time what will happen that time the shadow will form uh, which form will be a bigger and darker okay so this is about the shadow the change of the shadow depends upon the source of light it also depends upon the source of light and the object okay so source of light means where which type of light you are taking then how much light is produced from that uh, source of light is generated from that object that also is important now students you must have seen that the shadow of, uh, in previous days uh, the people used to um, take one uh, piece of log and they used to uh, put on the uh, land uh, parallel to the earth and they used to dig it on the uh, land uh, why they used to dig you know they used to see the shadow of that wood log and they used to decide the time of the 
time of the day that is if the uh, if the object formed due to the sunlight is longer then it is a morning time and uh, morning and evening time and if it is shorter it will be the afternoon time so they were deciding upon the shadow what time it was and uh, what time uh, it was so if the formation is longer that means it is morning or evening time and if the shadow formation is uh, smaller then the time is of afternoon time okay so students uh, there is one more uh, sundial uh, that is a uh, sundial is a uh, instrument which is uh, uh, instrument which indicates the time uh, and this uh, time was measured by placing a stick parallel to the axis of the earth and noting the time so there is a big sundial in jantar mantar that is in new delhi and this dial is used for indicating the time and direction okay so you should know this this is the extra knowledge question again in this slide you can see the scientist sir c v raman the great scientist c sir c v raman and that is uh, his full name is chandrashekhar venkat raman so he was the research he was he used to do the research work presented by the indian uh, for india so he used to uh, do research on the scattering of light and his research were so fruitful that they were expected were uh, expe accepted worldwide and his effects were named uh, efforts were named as raman effect so whatever he discovered or whatever research work he has done those were known as raman effects also students his birthday is also important he discovered this effects on 20 8 1928 so raman effects he discovered on 28 1928 so this date is very important students why this date is important because on this day we are celebrating our national science day so when the raman effects came to uh, discovered uh, that day was very important and this day was world widely accepted and this day was noted as the national science day from the year 1987 okay students so this is one of the scientists that you should know about then one more scientist was there that is the british scientist sir isaac newton now this uh, scientist what did he do he made a special disk okay what did he then he made a special disk on on this disk what he did he uh, took seven colors of petals and he pasted on that disk so red orange yellow green blue indigo violet all the seven colors he took and he pasted on that disk so what happened so what he did the disk was fitted to a stand so what he did he put this disk to a stand he, and he start rotating the disk very fastly so what happened Uh, when he start rotating the disc fast all the colors mix together all the colors mix together and what happened you could see only the white color so what does it do what this experiment proves us students this experiment proves that when the disc rotates all the seven colors disappears and the all these seven colors comes or are, are followed by a a white color okay and sunlight is also made up of seven colors but when it all the seven colors are rotated or mixed together only we can see white color in uh in only we can see white color so sunlight even the sunlight is made up of seven colors but when it reaches on the earth we can see only one color that is white color so this is about the disk which is also known as newton's disk so this disk was so much popular that it was known as newton's disk and newton's also written a book regarding his research and experiments 
that was known as optics which was totally related about the light so this is all about the lesson students and in this lesson we have